ladies and gentlemen, please welcome City Visions presenter, John Bella. Okay. Hi, everyone. It's uh, great to be here in New York, New York, and it's really a dream come true to be here in the Times building, actually. It's quite, a, it's quite thrilling for me. I have three minutes to tell you my story, so I'm going to get started. Um, ten years ago, some friends and I started an experiment. We thought, what if we could remake a part of our city and make it better? And we noticed that in my city in San Francisco, over 25% of the city's land area is roads and public right-of-way. But 70% of that space is allocated to moving or storing cars. Well, we thought, is this really the best use of urban real estate? <coughs> so we came up with this idea of repurposing a parking spot. We uh, roll, we'll put some coins in the parking meter to temporarily lease this space. We rolled out some turf, set up a park bench and a tree, and then we withdrew and watched what would happen. And sure enough, before, before too long, these two guys started to sit down next to one another and strike up a conversation, and we deemed the project a success. Yes, we created a social space where before it was just storing a chunk of metal. Well, uh, this, that image, uh, we put that image on the internet. Uh, we started getting calls from people around the world in a very short period of time saying, hey, could you create a park in a parking spot in my neighborhood in Sicily or in, or in Santa Monica? We couldn't physically travel around the world that time, so we made this decision to make the project open source. We created a how-to manual inspired by the IKEA manuals, which translated our guerrilla art project into a, a tool that anyone could use anywhere to use this project in their own home or community. Soon we saw uh, parks starting to park up, uh, pop up all over the world, and the event evolved into a one-day event called Parking Day, where people use the event as a platform to promote public health, or uh, the need for urban open space, <coughs> or the need for safer streets. This is in Seoul, South Korea. Or uh, simply a gathering space for friends and neighbors, these kind of third spaces, informal spaces. This is in Tehran, Iran. So a few short, in a few short years, our $200 guerrilla art intervention transformed into this global public participatory art, participatory art project about transforming our streets, one parking spot at a time. Uh, the project has spread to six continents, uh, all except Antarctica. Guess what? There's free parking in Antarctica. There's no parking meters. Um, <coughs> so the point of my story is that whether you're an architect, artist, politician, and policymaker, we all make up the city. You know, the city really is a, uh, our cultural collective contribution. We all have the, the power, the privilege, and the responsibility to make it great. A few years after the first parking day, we were approached by folks in San Francisco City Hall, some of the great dedicated public servants whom I like to call guerrilla bureaucrats. And uh, they said, we want to make your parking project permanent. So start, it started with a six-month prototype, and uh, the Parklet program was born. So now anyone in San Francisco with a parking space in front of their home or business can transform that space into a place for people. The city issues the permit. The project sponsor builds and maintains the space for the public. Uh, and we've learned a great deal from these parking spots all over, all over the world. It took a great deal of effort, actually, for the city of San Francisco to transform our uh, guerrilla art ac uh, intervention into a public process. This is about as streamlined as it gets, actually, but it really took a lot of work. Uh, but using this tool now, other cities around the world, inspired by San Francisco, have started to create their own parklet programs in different parts of the country and all over the world. So Boston has a program, <coughs> uh, Philadelphia, uh, Mexico City. And so these things have really sprouted up all over the world. It's been quite amazing. But what about here in New York? A couple years ago, uh, you know, I've been designing public space for about 10 years. I, I joined with uh, Gale Architects, and Gale Architects has been working in New York for about five or six years. One thing I learned from, from Gale is that um, in really, in order to take this work to scale, to make great public space designs, you need to measure what you care about. Let me give you an example. Who remembers Times Square from 2006? In 2007, we started observing public life in Times Square, and we discovered that there was no square in Times Square. 90% of the space in Times Square was allocated for moving and storing cars, but 90% of the people in Times Square were actually on foot, crammed into these tiny sidewalks. Well, I'm with this data, as I'm sure you, you know about, the Bloomberg administration and Jeanette Sadiq Khan, one of my personal heroes, flipped the script in Times Square and said, well, let's start with a six-month pilot. What if we set out lawn chairs and make more space for people? Of course, the people immediately flooded into the space and began to use the space to socialize and hang out and have fun. And the conversation shifted from, should we consider reducing vehicular ro roadways in Times Square to, hey, look, we need better chairs. This is New York City. <laughs> and so in a process we call iterative placemaking, we measured, tested, and refined, turning Times Square back into a square. Now, this is the Times Square of yesterday. This is the Times Square of today, and hopefully of tomorrow. Isn't this a better place for people? 
Um, so how do you start? Uh, it's easy. Start with a park in a parking spot. It's like the gateway drug for urban intervention. <laughs> or work with your city to create a parklet program. But no matter what you do, measure what you care about. Start observing public life and public space in your city and social diversity. And this is how you really transform cities across the globe. Uh, so whether you're an architect, artist, politician, policymaker, it's up to you. We all collectively make the city, and we can make the city great. Thank you.